Good morning, everyone. Welcome to another amazing conversation. Today, we have the pleasure of having Saul Catan from Catan Consulting in a very intriguing and in a very intriguing topic as cybersecurity. So, Saul, can you please tell us welcome? And can you please tell us a little bit about yourself? Uh, good morning, Gladys. Uh, thank you for the invitation. Thank you for having me in the show. Uh, I'm very excited. Um, well, my experience runs for the last uh, 25 years. I have been working in different companies, in different industries, in different countries, uh, transforming companies. Uh, and for the last 15 years, uh, I have been very involved in technology. I was the CEO of a telecommunication company in South America. Uh, and I continue today through Catan Consulting, transforming companies, not only financially and strategically, uh, which is a big strength, strength of, of, of my company, but now we're also uh, emerging in other technologies to help companies transform them, themselves. One is uh, the automatization of, uh, of processes, RPA, and the digitalization of documents, which is very trendy today. Uh, we have very advanced uh, tools uh, that, that can help companies in a big way. And of course, we are dealing today uh, with one of the hottest issues in the market, which is cybersecurity. So cybersecurity is a very big word. And the way I see it is that in, in this time and age is a real global war. And with everything that is going on, it has really become to disrupt our daily lives more than we ever thought so. The best example was the cyber attack on the gas pipeline that literally contributed to raising the prices in, in gas. And the other one was, and the ones that we know, uh, the meat distribution company that also contributed to a shortage in meat. So that has really disrupted our daily lives. And now ransom has become a normal word and companies have been faced with the fact that either they pay the ransom or they completely shut down. So this is the reason that I wanted to invite you today because cybersecurity has, is creating a problem. And you're talking about a very high tech or technology on digital transformation, on keeping everything digital, but how do we balance, how do we protect ourselves? Yeah, yes, Gladys, maybe when we talk about Continental and GBG are the most sounded examples or lately examples. Uh, nevertheless, this is a, a big issue uh, for the last uh, few years in the market. Uh, I, I believe we have the perfect storm uh, in today's world, uh, which is obviously the, trans the digital transformation of the companies, uh, the technology is everywhere. Nobody can, can live without a, a phone in their hand. Uh, and of course, uh, this gets uh, mixed up with the pandemia. What does the pandemic has to do with it? That people work remotely. So now, uh, not only the problem is inside the company, but now people are working from their homes. So the problem goes outside the company. Uh, so when you mix everything up, uh, you have the perfect storm for the hackers uh, to do many, many things uh, into the companies. Uh, as I said, uh, GBG and Continental are very sounded examples. But just a few months ago, uh, we had a very big example uh, of a cyber attack to the US government uh, through solar winds. Uh, it was very sounded just a, 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 few, a few months ago. And this took uh, President Biden uh, uh, to, to, uh, to have an executive order changing 
and, and make it more uh, harder for uh, a harder law for the, for the for cybersecurity. Uh, this has been during this semester. So so everything is turning upside down apparently, and we have hundreds and thousands of cyber attacks every day to many many different companies. Many of them uh, don't get to a ransom uh, type of, of, of attack, uh, but many, many companies are, be are being hurt on a daily basis. But for example, there is another way of a cyber attack that not only disrupted a life, but actually injured some lives by a little kid. Yes. Yes, uh, we, we have two types of, of, of attacks today, which makes it much harder to control. We have the kids uh, today who are very savvy in, in technology, who can just get into their computer and start uh, working around many things, playing around, and suddenly they're inside a company, they're inside a system without even knowing about it. Uh, they can make harm uh, to these companies or, or, or to these systems, uh, causing death or causing uh, paralysis in, in, in a system or in a country. What you say is true. A few years ago uh, in Germany, there was a, a cyber attack in, a, in the train system where there was a big accident and many people were injured and even dead. Uh, and this was caused by a kid who was playing and who suddenly uh, turned into uh, his computer, turned into the uh, command center of the train in Germany, and he started playing with the speed of the train, and he caused, uh, without knowing it, he caused uh, a, a very big accident. So we have the kids, which becomes a, a problem, uh, not because they're doing it on purpose or because they're looking for money, but ju they're just playing, and they can cause a lot of harm. And you have the pro professional hackers who are working for ransoms. Uh, and this becomes even worse today because we have the cryptocurrencies, we have the Bitcoins, uh, which is a way uh, to pay many types of ransoms uh, without uh, even detecting the money, where it, what it is going or how to control it. So before probably all these type of things, when they kidnap something, someone, uh, uh, they paid cash and cash eventually could be traced or, or, or somehow controlled. Uh, but today with cryptocurrencies becomes a very, very big issue for the authorities. But now it was traced uh, with the pipeline. They were able to recover 2 million of the cryptocurrency that was paid as a ransom. So they are getting a little better at that, but if we don't have the control on the on this type of money, it will continue. I, I hope that's true. I, I'm not I'm not completely sure that the money was really traced or it was just a news uh, to intimidate uh, the hackers. Uh, okay. But hopefully that's true. But uh, it is very very difficult to track. Uh, in many, many countries. Probably in the US, there's more controls and there's more compliance regarding who is trading uh, cryptocurrency. But in many uh, countries in uh, all over the world, uh, there's no control at all and tracing the money becomes very difficult. How can we protect ourselves? Like we hear I remember when uh, e-commerce started, and I remember because I, I was part of this whole education program on how e-commerce and you could put your credit card. And I remember that Visa invested a lot of the money into educating the people so that it was secure to put your information and that nobody would steal your information. And then now we see that if we put our credit card in a gas station, our credit card with the little machines that they put is being hacked. But that is 
just an inconvenience because we can just call the credit card and they will trace it. It's been hacked, you get a new credit card. It's an inconvenience, but now it's becoming much more disrupted in our daily lives and countries. Uh, there was an incident of a couple of years ago where a city was hacked and the city had actually had to pay 500,000 to get their information back. So how can we overcome this? Yes, I, I think it, it, it has become very difficult especially because people are not conscious yeah, about the problem. People think that because they have secure payment or because they just have an antivirus uh, in their company, uh, that's good enough to control uh, uh, cybersecurity uh, or cyber attacks. And, and that's not true. Today, uh, there's a, a bunch of things that can be done, uh, not only through payments, but just controlling or hacking, for example, the accounts payable, the invoicing of the company, uh, any of the, er of the critical areas of the company can stop a company completely and they cannot operate. So today it's not only the IT part of the company, it's also the operations of the company. And there's many tools in the market, many, many, many uh, different tools in the market. And we have to be conscious to be able to uh, to acquire the ones which are the best for our uh, needs and how can we put them together uh, and orchestrate everything together to make it work. Because it's not even, not, not even putting just tools to work and seeing what happens. Because there are so many things that are connected, so many things that you don't even know that you have in your company uh, that it starts creating false positives regarding cybersecurity. So, so, you, so you really need to have a, a big orchestrator uh, be able to control what it's, what all, what it's the infrastructure that you have, what is the, uh, all the tools that you have and put them together to be able to control them correctly. And it's not simple, but it can be done. Give me an example so that we can understand in in, in my terms, that we are not experts in cybersecurity. I know that you're talking, we're talking in very low impact terms, but when you're dealing with payrolls, when you're dealing with accounts receivable, it can create a whole mess within a company. Of course. And, that, and that's the problem because sometimes when, when, you, when you listen to a company that they are hacked, you think that they took over the company. And that's not necessarily true. As you say, if they just, if the company cannot invoice their customers because they, they hacked the, 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 the invoice section of the company to say it in a simple way, then they paralyze the company. The company cannot operate. They cannot sell because they, they cannot invoice. And they, so everything goes together today. Everything is connected between the parts. So if you just hack just a little piece, an essential piece of any company, you will paralyze the whole company. So how do these, um, I know that we in small companies, we have an antivirus or something like that. But when we're talking in bigger terms, when we're talking in cybersecurity, because for example, now uh, when I had the conversation with the chief of police and all the gun violence that's going on, it also had to do with the people that were able to hack the payments that were coming through the government. So they were able to get the $1,200 the $1, checks and convert it into cash. And this was what the war was all about because there were people going around with $500,000 in cash. And that was being done by a hacking system. So yeah. how do 
how do they protect themselves? Because this was directly the government. Yes, today, I, I believe that today the governments are investing some money, at least in cybersecurity, not enough. They still believe that the physical security is more important than the cybersecurity. So you see all these kinds of governments buying airplanes, uh, guns, weapons uh, to protect themselves. And they're being hacked and they're losing the war uh, uh, in the computer. Uh, but the, the biggest problem comes in the private companies where there is no conscious uh, and no obligation uh, to have any, any control in cybersecurity. And, and there is where people or companies are not investing money or not investing enough money uh, in cybersecurity and they're being hacked and they're being hacked every day. Uh, there is hundreds of uh, hacking, hackers uh, working to try to get in all types of companies. And this becomes a, a very important matter, uh, not, not only for the operation of the company, but for, for the high management, for the board of directors who are really responsible for this type of things. Um, the, last week, the government passed a bill of 200, the Senate passed a bill of $250 billion to be able to compete with China and the Chinese technology. So the government is telling us that if we have an idea or an invention in technology, they will help us. But nothing is being said about being about protecting ourselves. So wouldn't this be wouldn't this be the opportunity to put in some very hard laws about creating the technology, but also being able to protect it? Well, I, I think that it's a matter of time. I think that uh, little by little, there's more conscience about. Uh, uh, about the, the problem, especially with the, with the news. We have every day, we have a, a different news about cyber attacks. Uh, so now we hear that the Dow Jones, for example, uh, wants to make uh, an obligation for the companies listed in the Dow Jones to have certain protections uh, in cybersecurity. That's just an example of what can start happening uh, I, I don't believe that the government, the federal government will be able uh, to put uh, any obligations on, on private companies, uh, but they can start doing different type of laws and different types of uh, executive orders that can help uh, create the conscience in the, in the companies uh, to do it. And, and of course, uh, this has to do, uh, this has to be done by experts. It's not a matter of of just going to Best Buy and, and buy a tool or, or, or get into Amazon and buy a tool for your company and be protected. Uh, maybe for your house that works, uh, but for a company, a mid-sized company, a big company, uh, you really need the help of experts, uh, the best tools in the market. There are many, as I said before, uh, but there are also many tools which are uh, classified as the top uh, in the market. Uh, in the Gardner quadrants, you can find the best tools uh, for the different type of, 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 of problems that you're looking to solve. As I said, there's many, many, many different ki kinds of things that you want to protect. You want to protect uh, uh, your, your access controls, your hard hardware access controls, for example. You want to protect your cloud security. Uh, you want to pro protect your ER, EDR, uh, the end-to-end. Um, uh, you want to protect many, many different things. And there's not just one tool that says, okay, this can do it by itself and this can do it alone. Uh, so so that becomes uh, very important. So it's not like installing something in your computer and then you're free to go. Like, okay, I'm no. installing something and that's it, it's gonna be over. No, no, not at all. And, and today, as I said, there's so many tools and there's so, so many uh, false positive because uh, the, the companies have become so connected and so big that, it, that everything can become an issue. Anything can become a threat for the company. 
so today, what is trending, uh, it's the, the SOAR capabilities, which is the security orchestration, automation and response uh, capabilities, which is one software that can control what's happening with many other applications around the, the, the cybersecurity and can help with the processes. Uh, and so, so it helps a lot to reduce the false positive and, and to really become much more efficient. Uh, but it is very complex. And as I said, uh, people have to look for experts, for real experts and not just rely on any tool in the market. So the way I see it, and please correct me if I'm wrong, is that what you're seeing with SOAR, it's like a, an iron dome that you get attacked and it literally creates a barrier. But we, but there has to be several barriers in order to protect the whole company. It's not only one barrier that we put, it has to be each one specialized in each of the facets of the company. Yes, I, I, I see it in two ways. I think that you have to have a, a, a real map of all the infrastructure and all the systems that you have, everything that you have to connect it, that you have connected in your company has to be in a map that you really have to know what you have, uh, where it goes, uh, how it is connected. If I'm hacked in one, in one part of the company, how can I isolate that part from other parts? So that's very important to know. Many companies don't even know what they have because as I said, 10 or 15 or 20 years ago, your, your IT section of the company was just a rack with a few servers and, and, and two people, and that was it. Today, IT is everything. Everything is connected. Everything that you need uh, has to be connected to be able to, to operate as part of the company. So that's one part. And the other part is that you have to have the different tools uh, that can control uh, uh, and that can observe the, the whole company and you have something and you need to have something like the SOAR uh, that can orchestrate uh, in a big way all the tools that you have to try to, to protect. That doesn't mean that you are 100% safe, of course. It's like, like physical security. You can have uh, uh, armed people, you can have cameras, you can have alarms, you can have a lot of things, but you still get robbed. Uh, so, uh, but definitely this helps, this reduces the risk significantly. Uh, and I think uh, people, as I said, have to be conscious and have to start investing in a big way uh, in, in cybersecurity if, if they want to, to really survive this digital world. But um, I was reading lately that some of the people are recommending just keeping the hard drives and doing backups. But according to what we are talking about, this is not necessarily the fact. We can keep no, all the not, hard not drives that we can, but it's... No, not at all. Especially for mid-sized companies and big companies, this is impossible to have. Obviously, you need to have backups. Obviously, you need to have a, a, a lot of... A, cloud backups today, not only before you kept the, the hard drive in your, uh, in a backup in, in, in your drawer, in your desk or in the safe box. Today you can do it in the cloud and you can do a lot of things, but the cloud can be hacked. Uh, so, so there's many other things that just having a, a backup of your, of, of your hard drive. Uh, there's a lot of information that companies manage today digitally, uh, a lot of personal information, uh, about uh, a lot of uh, credit card information, a, a lot of things that are very sensible and that can be hacked. And as I say, today we're talking about Continental and, and GBG, but we have seen it so many times in the last couple of years of credit cards uh, stolen, uh, personal information stolen from, from many companies, from many big companies. We're not talking about uh, mom and dad companies. We're talking about very big companies and, and it has created a, a big issue for many people uh, uh, and for many companies. 
So people are afraid today to trust their information uh, to even the big companies. And I think they have to really invest a lot of money uh, to make things work. So why are not, why aren't more companies investing in cybersecurity when clearly it is costing them more to have a cyber attack to be asked for ransom or even when they take the information and have to deal with all the people that that the information was stolen from them. I remember the big companies that had all their customers and all the information was there. And I remember I got a card, your information was part of being stolen. So all that takes not only effort, but it costs money to reach out to me. So I don't understand why more people are not protecting themselves. I think they are. I think that you can see that there's all these big companies today, they have uh, their chief cybersecurity officer or whatever they call it, uh, but they don't spend enough money on it. I think they, they think that just having a person or a small department of people uh, working on cybersecurity and buying just a few tools, they are completely protected. And that's not true. This is evolving every day. Uh, there's always a lot of things happening. And if you are not really investing into this area, you will have a problem. Uh, but, but many companies say, okay, I already invested whatever the amount is. I don't have more budget. Uh, and I prefer to do marketing uh, that, that continue investing in cybersecurity, just as an example. And yeah, marketing is great and you can sell a lot. But just uh, one day of paralysis of the company will cost you much, much more than anything in that you can do in the efforts to, to increase revenues. Uh, so, so it's a matter of priorities. I think uh, there has to be a balance, of course. You cannot invest all your money in cybersecurity. Uh, but, but it is a, a matter of, uh, of a balance that, that you have to create in, in, within your company and give it a... Uh, uh, an, an important place in, in your company that it needs yeah okay. so so our time is over i wish we could have a whole course on how the actual cyber security works but i understand that this is part of keeping it secure so thank you so so much uh if anybody wants to contact you can you please tell us your information on your website or where they can contact you? Yes, my website is katanconsulting.com. Uh, there you can find uh, all my, my contact information and you can find information about many of the products they, that we have. Uh, and my email is saul at katanconsulting.com, just in case. Uh, but thank you, Gladys, for the short conversation. It was uh, really, really, uh, really short. As you said, we could keep on talking for, for many, many, many hours. I know uh, that the time is limited. So thank you so much. And to everyone, uh, be safe, and I'll see you next week. Have a great day. Bye. Thank you.